Of course, there's Tua Tonga Vailoa. This may be the biggest quarterback question in the league for the next month. He is projected at number five to the Dolphins in McShay's latest mock. Tua's agent, Chris Cabot, told the Montgomery advisor that he believes that Tua could be ready to play right away if needed. Here's the quote. There was a strong belief that he could play this season. If he's in a situation to where he needs to play, he's going to play, and he's going to prepare himself to play well. If it's a scenario where the team wants him to ease in, he's going to continue to prepare to be the best Tua he can be and help that team win games week to week. He's a student of the game. He loves the game. He's going to work hard, and he's going to be ready for either scenario. Laura Rutledge told us about the same thing yesterday. So let me come back to you, Jeff. The Dolphins and Tua have been connected, it feels like now, for more than a year. You told us last yeah. week that in their heart of hearts, the Dolphins are really in love with Joe Burrow. So with three weeks before the draft, yeah. what do you know of their plans here? Well, and to be very clear about that love for Joe Burrow, we're not talking about like creepy stalker love here. We're talking <laughs> right. about more like uh, socially distant love where they understand and respect the fact that he'll wind up likely with somebody else. I don't think talking to one source of the Dolphins, they'll do anything unreasonable or extreme or unprecedented to try to land Burrow. Instead, it does feel like the easier, more likely move would be, if any move at all is required, to move maybe into that three spot to get Tua. Because from what I understand, the organization does really, really like Tua as well. The health concerns are the big one when it comes to Tua. You won't really be able to evaluate him likely before the draft. You'll have to instead rely on some independent information. But just to be very clear here, they do have the ammo to be able to move up. How far they move up and what kind of willing participants they have in that trade remains the question that we'll be asking for the coming months. All right, Jeff, very good. Stay with me here. I'm going to keep we, uh, along. But let me bring Lewis and Dominique Foxworth into the conversation. Say good morning to Nick. And we have a lot to do with him. But, Lewis, I want to start with you because, uh, you know, your, your, your history in the front office and all the rest of that. And you sent a note that I thought was really interesting about a conversation you would have with your boss if you were a general manager considering taking Tua very high in this draft. Yeah, I mean, look... The your job as a general manager, as a team builder, really is to manage risk, to minimize risk to the club, especially when you're talking about making a franchise-altering draft pick like you're going to be making if you're, you're in charge of the Miami Dolphins this year and you're drafting in the top five, and if you're drafting a quarterback in particular. Now, in, in this kind of situation, look, there, there's so much risk involved with Tua, and as Jeff has already laid out, because you're not going to be able to have firsthand knowledge of where he is at in his rehab and how that projects to his availability going forward. So if you're held, you know, you're held accountable for the picks that you make throughout the draft, but in particular, these top five picks, and especially when you're talking about a quarterback, if I'm a GM right now, there's just no way that I, with, with a reasonable amount of security, could make that kind of pick without having some kind of assurance that from the very top of my organization, I have the support of ownership on down to say, hey, look, if something goes off the rails with this and then somehow we get surprised with some kind of information that doesn't, that doesn't you know, pan out very well for us as far as to his longevity, it's not going to be held against me. Otherwise, I would be very, very... Let's see, I would be very wary of making this pick or moving up at the very least to make this pick. I would want to sit tight where I'm at and just see if he falls to me, if I really had my sights set on him. If I was able to really convince everyone else and convince myself that, hey, we would be okay if we didn't get to him, we didn't get Joe Burrow, and that, you know what, we, maybe we could go with Justin Herbert. We would be just fine picking him at the five spot. And we feel as though that we could coach him into being exactly what we want and still minimizing that amount of risk. Maybe that's the route that I would want to go. I think I would want to have all of those kinds of conversations because the risk is just too great. It's just too great when you're talking about drafting a quarterback that high without having firsthand knowledge about where he is at physically. It's just too great. I've got to follow up on two yeah. pieces. Nick, I'm coming to you in a minute, but i got to follow up quickly on two pieces of that, Lewis. Do owners of NFL teams tend to give those kinds of assurances? Is, is that something that happens that an owner will say, yes, we understand no. the injury risk here. We won't fire you if this thing goes wrong? <laughs> yeah, you know, I, I don't know. I mean, that's not necessarily something that's really that's structured and happens throughout the league. But I think that's the kind of conversation that you need to have as far as when we talk about everyone being on the same page, that you got to have everybody understand, look, these are what our expectations are. This is the risk that we're taking. Are we all on board with this? We all know that this could be something that absolutely we don't ever have to revisit or something that could really go bad because we don't know. We don't have all the information. And then if something does go bad, 
You just don't, that's when you don't want people kind of like scattering everywhere going, hey, look, I never signed off on that. I didn't want the guy. You wanted the guy. You have a bunch of finger pointing going on. That's the kind of thing you want to prevent in this kind of situation. That's really what I'm saying. I, I mean, it's not something you could have written into a contract or something like that. I'm just talking about from a conversational standpoint and making sure we're all on the same page type of standpoint, you have to have everything lined up if you're going to take to it in this environment. I get it. I need it in the contract, though. I hear what you're saying, but I wouldn't feel good about it without that. <laughs> yeah. I'm going to get Darlington back in, but let me get, get Dominic Foxworth in for the first time this morning. You hear this conversation. You know the way people tend to operate in the National Football League. Do you see a scenario, Nick, where rather than, than – Teams going up to get Tua where he could actually be the guy who falls in this thing because of the kinds of concerns that Lewis is talking about? Yeah, maybe. And I think this year is a particular season where it could happen because of how different the offseason is. And people won't have a chance to be able to touch Tua and talk to Tua and see him do a pro day style workout. Maybe they'd be more likely to pass on a guy like that because you would you might have a little bit more confidence if you got him in your building, you got to talk to him and your your doctors got to um check out his hip and his various other injuries, maybe you'd have the confidence to move up. So I could see people waiting that way. And I love the utopian society that Lewis has created where you can trust NFL team owners. Like one thing <laughs> I learned about playing in the league is coaches and GMs lie to players and owners lie to coaches and GMs. And then when, when someone gets fired, you say, well, it's a business. That's the thing that we always say when this happens. So I think Lewis knows that that, that, um, that idea that he presented is not one that he would have much faith in if an owner was like, sure. Go ahead and draft them. Don't worry. We got your back. Yeah. Thank you for watching ESPN on YouTube. For live streaming sports and premium content, subscribe to ESPN+. Plus.